with Roshan is to it just helps through uh, through mass serpent wards. And the only movement speeds uh, problems of Shadow Shaman are kind of like destroyed by having the Tuscar. He's also a really great pickup against the Wisp because you want to have some burst damage, which isn't just relying on the Templar Assassin or Tuscar to come in there and just punch him. Like it's. The Shadow Shaman with Aether Shock at level 4 is a real problem for the Wisp uh, and Tiny pickup. Alright, I'm, uh, I'm officially concerned with like gaming. I like their lineup, like overall, like if you looked at their lineup without even put your hand over the top of the LGD lineup and you looked at like gaming and you go, alright, sweet, well, we've got to sell, sell some good lanes, that's, that's going to be a, uh, a Brewmaster off lane, just finding farm. You're going to have a puck in the middle lane, or you can actually run a puck off lane, Brewmaster safe lane, Tiny and Whisk can go in towards the middle lane then, and your Sky Wrath Mage can go wherever he's really needed. So that's fine. And if you're doing a dual lane, then the Brewmaster Sky Wrath can go in the safe lane, Tiny Wisp in the uh, on the middle, and the park over on the top. See, life is really good. But when you start looking at the line from LGT, I'm liking their form of initiation, and I'm liking the fact they've got so much control. Like right now, the only controlling heroes which you're, which you're pulling out from Light Gaming are the last two they selected. It's the Tiny as well as the Wisp. So it's Avalanche and Toss. I'm not going to count Cragly Exterior, even though it procs more times than it really should. Uh, and your Puck Dream Coil. That's it. <laughs> if, if you're looking for more control, the Brewmaster split will be there. And sure, the Brewmaster will more than likely get his split off in most engagements. Uh, and that's primarily because you're going to see the snowball coming at you. So the old-fashioned way of let's just snowball in and then we'll hoof stomp him, then we'll hex him, then we'll shackle him, then we'll TA will have time to burst him down and we'll just walrus punch him while we're at it. Like, all that kind of jazz, it can be thrown at him. But the only way he's going to get caught out by that is if there's a blink deck very early over on that centaur. That's the only way that's really going to work. What I'd actually like to see right now um, is in July. Uh, you can see him already hitting down south. I think that might just be where his hero spawned to. But if they assume that it's going to be like a puck on an off lane, uh, on an off lane roll, battling up against a centaur, you just get res return and, st and stout shield with a couple of consumables, and you're fine. You'll stay on the front lines and you'll just farm it up. Avoid as many orbs as you possibly can, um, but you should be good to go. And then your middle lane, well, that could be what it, that, that'll be Yao. There's no, <laughs> there's no decision in that whatsoever. Uh, MMY and Faith can rotate around and Sally goes off lane. And with the rotating supports, it's going to be very difficult. All they want to do is just kill off the Sky Wrath Mage. They kill off the Sky Wrath Mage to start with, then Sky Wrath gets into this element of fear that he can't move into the lane and try and harass him back. And the fact that if you do get a shackle over on that Sky Wrath and, and you are near the bottom lane, you're probably going to get a kill. So, you... God, I'm feeling good today! Alright, we're going to have in July up on the top lane. He'll be taking up the Royals of Centaur War Runner. That puts MMY Siler down towards the bottom lane. They'll have their supporting hero, which is Faith. And Yao will go in towards the mid. He's hanging around them so he can take some extra shared tangos. He gets one from each of them. Clarity over on Tusker, so he's ready to run himself around and try and find some extra kills. And you've already got the boots as well there for Tusker. So, he's good to rock and rumble. And as far as the lanes go for light gaming, it will be a Brewmaster on the safe lane. This is actually going to make LGD's laning a little stronger because you got you got a range hero in Sila. Actually, are they running dual lanes? It looks like they're just going to just do the dual lane. I talked about the combination before that LGD do enjoy, which is just something very very simple. So to let's let's play this out in our minds. So you basically got a brewmaster just sitting around here farming, and then you got person one, person two. This Tusker throws down the ice path or the ice shards, and gets them caught into this little area. Marana then throws the arrow, and by the time the Tuscar tries to loop out, or out, it's just impossible to do so before the arrow is capable of connecting. So what you do is, you get yourself an arrow here. That's, that's a simple part of it. There's not a combination which has been played a hell of a lot, and what the hell did you just do? Um, I'm assuming while all that was going on, I was missing some kind of engagement. I'm sorry! I'm sorry, everybody! Considering Centaur's already used uh, one of his war stomps. And Faith actually used a shackle as well. They must have found the puck as they were going for one of the runes. That was Mariah that she gets the illusion rune on the bottom. Yeah, alright, so my bad. <laughs> Whoops! Too busy in my own train of thought going John Madden style. Yao. Well, he gets to cut the first brunt of the attack, but at the same time, he's, he's rushing a bottle. 
He's rushing a bottle. So, he doesn't really care about the spam at this point, especially considering the bottle's coming out now. He purchases it, and then I'll come on the courier. Shackles on the top lane. No matter for a hoof stop, would you believe? Because that engagement, which we did not see. Um, and that's Faith and in July. From the jaws of <laughs> it's not map awareness. The map awareness is good if you're looking for it, but you don't really think that a puck is going to get caught out in the early stages. So I let my brain go elsewhere. That is map awareness. Ah, oh, for no, old man, grumble. Yeah. There's the ice shard just harassing the brewmaster, making it difficult to move again. Silas still hasn't skilled up anything just yet. If he wants arrow or leap or starfall, all options are available to him. He's going to wait for level two, by the looks of it. Uh, so Yaki's farming up against XTD. Super also uh, running that bottle already. He's trying to stay on top of Yao. And there's your avalanche. No toss combination coming out because he's too short of the mana. And that's why Super needs to give him a little bit more back. But the bottle is still on the run. Beat you to it. First blood. Oh, Puck's dying right. again. <laughs> Matter. <laughs> oh, stop, double edge. He went from like like a hundred to zero in the space of half a second. Second I see an inch on the top. And he drops very, very quickly. So LGD with the first kill. Super will be able to pick up a nice DD rune on uh, helping Mice get up against Yao. Which so far they are keeping his farm down, which was the goal. So we talked about during the drafting stage. It was, it was the primary goal. While on bottom lane, Skywrath mage, there's no more protection from MMY able to shift the aggro of the tower. And also make sure he's going to hit into the Skywrath mage. But that's that ice shards into arrow combination. Two points up in that arrow as well. That is So both LGD safe lane and on off lane are able to get kills. And they're coming again for this top lane. Faye's trying to get into a good position where he can get the shackles. And uh, well, he just starts battling up against him because Centaur's too busy farming. So a quick orb away, <laughs> and now TA. Revenge kill, in the middle. Well, they've been over-aggressive enough, it was about time they got themselves a kill, but they're still with just a 2-1 combination. Downside for TA is not only the Spirits taking off the Refraction Challenge, the defensive ones, but it's also because the Avalanche is technically a 2-hit target. So it takes out... <laughs> oh. Just this movement is freaking hilarious. Um, going in behind the tower. Clean off the tree line. This might have actually been really intentional. In the meantime, yes, the puck died again on the top lane. Um, but by doing so, he's making it so Yao can't hide in the tree lines. But Yao doesn't hide in the tree lines. He's got himself meld. He hides in plain sight. So unless they bring a sentry ward... Oh, would you believe it? Um, <laughs> they're not going to reveal him, but now they will because they brought a sentry ward. So there's no dodging inside the meld. Denied. What's MMY picking up? Uh, just TP scrolls. Which may mean uh, shortly he'll combine up with Faith. Who's already back at base at the moment. In fact, MMY is going to rotate over and see if he can find a 4-minute rune. And the Joy will not be there for him. And again, it's going to be super. His bottle is coming up. Uh, <laughs> the Faith boost is being delivered to XTD. And now super does have his bottle. So he'll have to use all of his charges before he picks up the regeneration rune. But this is being watched by the Dire side, so they know what's going on. While they down look for a kill on the bottom lane. So Tuscar, he sent it just to snowball in and go on uh, 500. But it's a it's a difficult line to try and get, especially with such a creep wave that's already there. Sada would have to leap himself over the tree line in order to fire up an arrow that direction. Now the ice shards. No arrow is going to come from this. The sigils try and slow him down, but. This is a very, very long-range arrow, and it was visible for a very long time, too. So Skyrath Mage is getting slowed up a little bit more. Uh, the Brewmaster is going to make his way over, and then Snowball Protection. He comes down, there's your arrow, able to not connect, in fact, but the last attack coming in with the Centaur ulti. MMY will kill him off, and Sylar able to run himself out. MMY, worth the TP, not going to use it. Sylar, worth the leap, he'll use that. They get away with killing the Skyrath Mage. They did have to uh, expand the Centaur ulti from in July. Radiance but they fall as a rotation down from attack. the Wisp, which has bought space for the Templar Assassin to finally come in a little bit closer up against this Tiny. Still being a little bit more cautious about things though, but... Because they don't know the Wisp has moved. There's no vision for the Dire side inside oh, the Radiant no. Jungle. They just know that the Wisp isn't being as aggressive as she was before. Now, Sentry, Avalanche, no hiding. 
tosses him back, so all the spirits better connected to Yao, but he's got another refraction charge as well as meld available. Back behind the tower, drop a secondary sentry ward if they want to kill off Yao, because he's probably going to hide again. But a toss, and there goes the second sentry. Him and Blind will arrive. The eye shard is actually locking super in here. He wants to tether out, but uh, the Tani was a little bit too close for him, so he had to tether over towards the Sky Wrath Mage while the snowball trying to chase down super. But just cannot reach the shaman. Trying to also get there in time just to eat the shock down super. But we're staying a very, very long time here in the mid. But now he's going to pick up a haste rune as well. More bottle charges coming in for this wisp. Well, we'll have just shy of arcane boots for the brewmaster. And light gaming. Actually looking quite good right now. Two to four. The only thing which isn't looking great for them is going to be what's happening with the centaur in the top lane. Angel is about to reach his blink dagger. He's 1,900 gold out of the 2,150 required. Centaur is going to go again. Where is this one? It's top lane. It's top lane. They're going up the puck. The shackles need to be there. Can't get in range. But the initiation failing from LGDCN. You'll scare the crap out of the bottom lane for a moment, though. Especially when Silas started moving that quickly. And so far, Sila. 22 for 10. Not too bad for his farm, considering he's on par with the Brewmaster. So it's even Stevens for that lane. Probably should be bringing up this graph as well, which we'll now just show you. Like, it's two kills in front, but you're still ahead by 1,700 experience. And the gold advantage was also at quite higher. So all these rotations from Lai, they're finding kills, but overall, they're not gaining an advantage. Now they're going to kill off Faith. The Avalanche will connect. He gets a quick hex, so there's no combination. But the hex will only last for so long. And Angelai hides in the tree line. The orb will scout him out. He can go for the hoof stomp. Get a back. Actually, screwed up a little bit. Couldn't get the hit. So Curse now gets one last hit on the creep and then decides to die at his own tier one tower. Bottom well, lines an engagement coming up from the Sky Rush Mage if he can. He'll need to seal off Sila to make this work. So seal, concussive orb, and then the clamp's also going to have to crack into Sila. And they have almost enough time. Leave himself back inside the creep wave, and Sila's dead. They did have enough time to get that secondary attack. orb off. And LGD are in trouble. LGD are actually in a lot of trouble right now. They're losing momentum all across the map. Yao is at least going to be able to bring down this, mi this mid tower. Well, actually, no, he's not. To back up, he's lost his creep wave. And the damage output's really poor. If you, if you look at their lineup, <laughs> pretty much split, really? Angel is able to get the kill, but then sends her Aldi away. That's his blink dagger already going to work. Quick pick off from the Sky Wrath Mage. Fire Brilliant skipping Angel Eye rather low there. There's no relocate available. Tuskus also set up into all the air. They're searching for the Earth Brilliant. But he's back underneath the tier 1 tower now, and Angel Eye to walk all the way back to base. And he won't be able to come out straight away either. That TP scroll is still on cooldown for the moment. We got Phase Boots Puck. Pull damage out of any way you possibly can. But overall, that Tiny is the one who's really leading the charge. That middle lane just didn't work for the Templar Assassin. The Wiz Tiny is just too much for her. And the supports never really rotated in from the start to, to tip that balance. They try to focus on the other lanes instead. Keep the Brewmaster down, which also didn't work, but now, and they jump, Centaur, instantly sealed up with the Master Surf Wards, they might be down in a really good position here for Faith, XCD shackled up, he already got his combo off, however, killing off Centaur, the Skyrath Mage, MMY, and will stay in range for this, speaking of range, they were locked there, the Moonlight Shadow went from LGD trying to give him some protection, but I'm seeing two Sentry Wards around the, uh, around the tower, and with the Master Surf Wards also down in front of the tower, LGD want this thing dead, the arrows are coming in, a little bit too low, the Super and XCT, they are already pretty dead low themselves. Snowball, all right, Super. Tether up, the ball's going to follow. They're going to stay close. The leap, as well as the ice shots. They catch up to the Wisp. More supports <laughs> on the way in from the Sky Wrath Mage. Mystic Flare is available. But he doesn't really ever hear it. Well, actually, Silary could drop pretty quickly. I think he's more concerned about what happens if the TA turns, as well as MMY turns. And the ice shots were still on cooldown, so we wasn't going to get control from that. And really, he had enough mana to, to throw out that Mystic Flare. It's only 60 seconds cooldown. Might as well give it a shot. Meanwhile, on bottom lane, the Brewmaster. Wait, 11 seconds I'll off split. And we'll get picked off by LGD. 
So all that momentum, which was feeling like uh, light gaming, we're picking up. Now it turns the opposite direction. 2,000 going the way of LGD again. And 1,500 in the experience. And XDD, well, at least he can harass Siler a little bit here in the middle lane. But that's basically all he can do. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. That actually may be enough. <laughs> Just some easy tosses going to work. It does take a lot of mana to do this, however. He's looking for another one. It's not enough, though. Tyler will survive 140 Rise life points. Leave a parting arrow just for good time, says so uh, Wisp. Oh, there's a relocate. They're coming up to the top lane. The Dream Call's holding in July there. Hilarious Shut thing up. is, like, okay, maybe not hilarious, but slightly amusing. If that Marana didn't leap away as far as she did, like if it was just around here and fired the arrow, that arrow was perfectly on target to hit the Wisp who was sitting here. And he wasn't flinching. He was looking towards the top lane the entire time. Pretty much splits gone again here on the bottom lane. Looks like attempted gank. But, uh, only shock was used, not shackles. And again, you see the Storm Brilling and the Fire Brilling just left behind. And they can't really find themselves any kind of four hell lane. Like Tower's fallen. gonna go down center we'll Roddy as well. Faith, anywhere. he's gonna go for the shackles again, just holding the tiny here in super. While he's staying tethered, he wants to heal them up, he knows he can't stay that close. XDD just gets an easy yes. quick kill, now he comes back in again. Already healing up with that urn, which means he's healing XDD. The Mel Strike won't be able to connect, and now they can turn. No Mystic Flare available. Siler and Yang being kept out. Polar Punch going into the Skywrath Mage. By Null Tower, I'm expecting his own death, which he. My blades and my mind are as one. But the Wisp and Tiny stay alive. Tiny able to get another kill with a 4-1 streak at the moment. This will be his point booster as well as probably his Ogre Club. Dyer's top tower is under attack. While on bottom lane, the Brewmaster with his Blink Tag. What else has he managed to purchase up apart from Arcane's? I suppose 12 minutes into the game, it could be worse. It's that Roshan attempt we're talking about, but with Puck's movements up on this top lane, while well, he's also still trying to afford up his own his own blink dagger, uh, he's keeping pressure onto this tier 2 tower. So they have to use Mass Surf, Moors, and Templar Assassin to try and bring down Roshan. Not the easiest thing in the world. And Yao wants to tank up a hell of a lot for this. He's got no bottle charges either. Tuskar can come in. Or even Sigil or something. Yeah, there we go, Sigil. <laughs> That was off cooldown the entire time, so he just stood there thinking for a moment, do you want the sigil? Thanks. Or do you need the sigil? It's probably a better better question. Oh, Which, yeah, does not. Takes the urn charge. And takes the Aegis the Immortal. Siler on the top lane, gonna leap and take the stun, just in case there was a relocate coming, which there is, and he runs the opposite direction. Fate came into it, and he'll hex up to the tiny. Shackles as well, which means they're gonna try and turn to fight this one. The eye shots, trying to separate Super as well as XTD. Attempting the punch, but connecting on nothing. Actually, no. Hey, I'm hearing the sound effect for it now. There's your Falcon Punch. He did the animation for it, which I'm like, well, that hero looked far enough away. Bottom lane, jump, instant split. The ceiling in July as well. Nothing he could do but die. And now they move over to Yao. Another Sentry Ward is available, so he can't hide inside the meld. There goes the Sentry Ward down, and Yao will die in the bottom lane. Light gaming. They're picking up momentum, and they're picking it up, they're picking it up quick. And now Yao, sealed up, clapped up, drunken brawl, and avalanche down by the tiny. And five heroes appearing on the bottom lane. They will push and take this tier one tower on this bottom lane. There is little to nothing that Sala could do to stop this. And when this tower goes down, XDD is going to be that inch away from having his Aghanim Scepter. Three twenty minutes on this tiny. That's with Faith Boots and Drum Charges. If they can't give him the last hit, look, he's trying to time it. <laughs> and he gets it. Has fallen. So 450 gold away from Ags. He's running very, very low on mana, however. With no arcane boots over on the Skywrath Mage. And the Brewmaster one still on Blink Dagger. Uh, on cooldown. Actually, yeah. Walk next to him, and then trigger arcanes. Uh, he's TPing out already. Might have been worthwhile waiting the extra two seconds. Uh, they'll tether and actually do it the other way. This actually brings Brewmaster up to full mana, basically, because they were tethered onto that. XDD, well, MMY, the Sigil's protecting you for the moment. There's X... <laughs> He's a task mate. It's pathetic. Because the Sigil is awesome. A level force, a level four. Why the hell does I keep disappearing when I move?
Um, the level 4 sigil, so 60 attack slow. The movement is at 25%. This is the perfect thing you want when you're going through it, going in a team fight. And LGD now. Trying to force the tier 1 tower in the bottom lane. Considering all of Light Gaming have already backed up from this, they will take it with no contest. The relocate is up. TA Trap scouting out the fact the Puck is here and he blinks up. And she got a two man dream call. Where is this relocate coming in? There it is, off to the side tree line. And Faith, the shackles are down, so are the mass surfer mods. But it's already a double kill coming in for, of all people, Stupa, playing in that role as the Wisp. As Sal will TP himself out in the tree line, the orb will give the vision and sees Yao for just a moment. But a moment is not enough, and he was too far away. Especially when Super as well as XDD had already relocated back up to the top lane. But that's his Aghanim's up and running. So 16 minutes and 30 seconds, the Aghanim should arrive. This Wiz Tiny combo is going to walk all over LGD. The Templar Assassin doesn't have enough momentum. The BKB won't protect her enough either, because the physical DPS is now becoming a problem from the Tiny. And as you can see him right there, almost 250 a swing. As long as Refraction is down, which, with the Wiz supporting you as well as your Avalanche, it will be down. The BKB is going to be the only thing protecting her from, the, from that kind of burst damage as well, which is like Mystic Flare and such. But if that BKB is off, he just goes straight in. Or oh, the physical DPS of the Tiny, that's it. So 17 minutes in, we'll now check out Vance spiking back up again. That's a big fight too. Over 3,000 in the experience, pushing up to 2.5k in the net worth. They do have a tower advantage, of course, by one tier one. So Light Gaming do have that kind of perk. But beyond that, oh, XTT now farming up at the same time, a three-man smoke gank. They're going to come pretty close. Tiny's going to walk up. But they don't see him, actually. Now, well, LGD saw him. Super, the smoke will break. That's a, that's a dire observer war. The Sigil will come up and Super realized completely slowed up and will tether away. MMY's blink dagger. He went in for the polar punch. The Havian stop tower is under but again, attack. it looks like it doesn't connect. A little un hard to understand. Um, so T1 tower, I'm assuming it's just China servers. But the top T1 tower will drop. But they use Man's open wall to, to pick this up. Tower has fallen. And now the rest of uh, Light Gaming are going to walk straight past the Man's open wards. You still got the Wiz Tiny here, and they're calling for a relocate. It's going to be a little bit too late. And then why? The Dream Call will stop him from getting out of this one. The Orbitals are going to fly up a very, very long way to injure Light Snowball, though. He had to stick around. XTT couldn't just leave straight away. There was that relocate. Unable to find anybody around here. They dropped the search ward just in case anyone was here. Inside the Moonland Shadow, but they won't find anybody. And Yao waits on top of the relocate spot. And the Meld will follow him. The little ram is up, and Super, not enough long points. But the Brewmaster will jump in. He goes instantly into a split, and he will get revenge here. Gonna go on to Faith. More importantly, it's a double control. Faith running out to the bottom. No. The Five Ruling is gonna pick him off here, while back in middle lane, the send up of Yao into the air by the Thorn Ruling allowed the rest of my gaming to come in and be set up. They've already brought down three. The Biber came out from the Shadow Shaman. Yao now turns, trying to throw the Meld out, but the Shackles holding the Brewmaster in position. He'll turn to a man fight at the moment. The toss up is just tossing Silo around. Around a little bit. The BKB is coming off cooldown in a moment for uh, uh, coming of duration in a moment for Yao, and that's why XTD wants to go back in again. Brewmaster master clap, avalanche toss, fate. There's his dive back right now. XTD, he's trying to get himself away up towards the high ground, jorted himself out, but now into the hands of Yao and Evan Wall. The next for a snowball that takes it to the Brewmaster. he will blink away, which means the snowball cancels halfway across. There she got pushed back as our up onto this little ledge here. So they got pushed back up there. Yara will miss. Go straight between the tethered units. But that's 16 13 now. The buyback out from the Shaman's gonna hurt his, uh, his potential for Blink Dagger. And the fact that the Tiny again. No deaths on this Tiny. Got the Centaur and got the Shaman. Because the Templar Assassin was able to pick up a couple of kills. Means the BKB is the only thing she'll have. Up to 950 golds, so the damage items might start to come up a little bit sooner here for Yao. It's not going to be an easy task. Especially when the Brewmaster is able to pick up his own Aghanim Scepter, which now we've started into. We need a little bit more space to farm it up, and Tiny's taking a lot. In fact, he's probably got... Yeah, it's... We're, we're starting now into the Yasha. We're going damage building Tiny. Probably means too we're looking at a Manta style coming up from him. It can just be a casual Yasha. 
and then he goes into Assault Kuros. It's a little more old school. In fact, actually, if you want to go full old school, it's, uh, I say full old school. I, the older builds, which I remember at least, is uh, just the early Yasha. This gives you extra attack speed and movement speed early on. Uh, and then you go into your Aghanim Scepter. From there, you build a Hyperstone. Uh, build a hyper, you buy a Hyperstone. And you can make the choice. But that's where you get yourself to and then you realize, okay. If we're pushing high ground by this point, then uh, I need the Assault Kuras. Because in the negative armor against the buildings, it really lets you hit really, really hard. Uh, and if you're also struggling to stay alive, then you also go for the Assault Kuras. If you're feeling like you're getting the upper hand during the team fight, you go to Manta Style. Or if there's something important which you're trying to break free of or dodge, then Manta Style as well. And with the sign from LGD, I'm fairly certain there's a couple of things you would really, really like to dodge. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Manta Style is a bit of a gamble. What do we got coming on the Courier? Mech! That's coming up for Super. So a 21 minute 30 mech. Not the greatest mech timing in the world, but then again, Wisp isn't taking any kind of CS. 26-1 and then 20, 20, uh, 21, the lowest. But the Skywrath Mage know what's, knows what he's he, he knows what he is here for. And that's to kill Silo at the moment. Not to get the seal. Ah, fuck, too short. Need to get that warning rift to come, and now on the bottom lane, Tiny really can't say it's the only way he's going to get him out of this one at the moment. And there it is, the pull in and the pull out. <laughs> the shackles going global. XDD had to stop for a moment. Then Moonlight shut it up, and that's a DD there. So Super, he'll come back to the party to die. There's nothing he can jump to. He triggers the mech just to make him work a, like a fraction of a second harder. <laughs> but a global shackle. Holding that tiny Dyer's in position. I love it. And now the T2 tower in the top lane. Because XDU is just, well. Straight back out. Top lane T2 tower, not going to go down yet. The arrows are coming up from the side. They can see him coming here. The ping is coming up from LGD saying, yo, guys, like they're up here. In fact, with that gem on MMY, they're going to get rid of all these aggressive wards of Lie Gaming and buy themselves some space. And they're going to need it too. Templar Assassin Tramp's going to reveal the fact that Roshan is spawning. Which means Lie Gaming. They've also got to find a way to scout out the fact that Roshan's in there. TA is already now building into what will be a Desolator. So a large amount of damage. Clamp on the Scylla. Seal. Dead. Mystic Flare's trying to push him back down a little bit further. And the Puck Rift will bring him down. Ron's actually quite tanky, considering she's walking around with the drums. We got our answer from XTD. It is going to be the full assault, Kuras. Funny thing is, though, he's building this a very unusual way. Unless he's got a hyperstone sitting back at base, which he does not. Normally, you don't build the armor unless you're really worried, but even then, you just buy the plate, the plate mount. But it's the fact that you haven't got. Okay, yeah, Roshan was going to happen. Um, that was going to happen anyway. Uh, so we focus on something else. The Assault Kuras, you, you normally go for attack speed. Which is where your Hyperstone comes in. Are we going to relocate gank? Nope, let's relocate tower. No one else is showing themselves and they have no vision to go for a relocate gank. But that is the uh, second last out of tower for LGD. It does take a fall. Yeah. Yeah, but it looks like he's just going to build the, uh, the AC a different way. Now that blink dagger is up on Shaman. A little bit delay as we said before. Faith buying back during those that last engagement in mid lane under the tier 2 tower. That actually allowed LGD to hold the tier 2 tower, which at this point seems to be a good thing, but a very inconsequential thing in the later, later portion of the game. Because Tiny doesn't take long to bring down towers, especially the outer towers. And now he's moving up. Looking towards that tier 2 tower in the bottom lane. And LGD are faced with a choice. They don't have any mass serpent wards at the moment. They use them to pick up Roshan. But they got to make the choice if they really want to try and have a crack at defending this tower or not. Especially when Yao is so close to finishing up his Desolator. They're not really ready to fight. He has an Aegis the Immortal, of course. Which might be a reason why LGD would be happy to fight. But you're only a minute and a half into your Aegis the Immortal. There's no reason to blow it, blow your load early. Abordameria. Oh, there I am. 690. Give him, give him the Allies Ancients as well. Like in a Moonlight Shadow. Oh! Silo attacked the Illusion. Just at the last moment. 
That's why he uh, was a little bit later going into uh, into his moonlight uh, into his moonlight shadow. And this revealed to Light Gaming what uh, LGD were up to. So moonlight shadow is going to get wasted. If that was an instant smoke, it would have been different. And now, welcome to Desolator. So the damage output of the Templar Assassin really starting to go through the roof, but XDT, this guy's farming like a machine. Now up to 14,000 net worth in 26 minutes. While the advantage doesn't look that big for Light Gaming, most of it's on the Tiny. Which also gives you a bit of a uh, catch-22. Because if the Tiny is the primary focus here of LGD and they bring him down, there's not much more left to fight with. The TA will mop up the Brulings pretty damn quickly. And a Puck, Skyrath, and Wisp up against a, uh, like a BKB Deso Templar Assassin. You do not want to be near her. This Tiny has to kill TA. Goal at the start of every single fight should be the Templar Assassin's death. Because then you remove most, if not all, of the damage of LGD. The Centaur is still going to be a problem. But... A problem you can deal with because once he once he pops his uh, his initial hoof stomp as well as d uh, double edge, your magical damage is basically gone. The silence of control coming up from Puck, I it could just hold him there long enough to do it, but really she needs to throw all that kind of stuff at the Templar Assassin. The way of the world is on her shoulders. The Mirana damage is probably something else we should keep tabs on because I've I'm kind of actually counting out Sila here when I really shouldn't be, and that's the fact that Mirana has 2,500 gold. As well as Maelstrom drums and face boots, so maybe the uh, the hero flying under the radar at the moment against Light Gaming would be the Mirana. And they tried a couple of ganks, but it's still two two with 133 CS. And now your full assault Curus is done. Flying in on the courier, probably the worst time for LG LG to try and go and gank. But then again, this Aegis the Immortal is going to run out shortly. They need to do something with it. Forcing a team fight right now, I don't know if that's exactly what they want to be doing, but they might be pressured into it. There's XDD. Double damage. Back to farming on the bottom lane. Guy's got no buyback because he bought the full assault Kyrus, but right now, the like XDD feels a little invincible. And he's already up to level 16. Poor little heroes like Tasker to try and snowball into that one. I'll die instantly the second they come out. It's probably the reason too. Why MMY. Just walking around with the blink deck. Like he can be a jump in for polar punch. But the other thing is he can snowball in and blink straight back out again. That's if he feels a little bit too risky. Oh, there's a lot of pins coming out here. And the smokes. Is that coming up to the high ground? XTT's looking for him. But LGD, they get up. They're up on the high ground, they're gonna loop around the tree line. Super's gonna be the first one in close, and then Blink, Wolf stop, got XDD as well. Then into the shards, but then the mass overboards in a really nice position on the choke point with the shards keeping the rest of Light Gaming out. It's still a two for the price of one. One already bought back into this game, and the Brewmaster sending the Marana up into the air. The Moonlight Shadow giving him the protection they require. While the Sigil at the front line, Sentry Wards are down, and Yao wants to fight this. He's still got that Aegis the Immortal up his sleeve, only for another 26 seconds, however. It's almost worth just turning, Yao. Now you got no Centaur ulti, but Run Arrow is coming off cooldown. But they're going to hold on to it. Somehow she didn't have to use a BK Beach uh, during that one, the Templar Assassin. And LGD. That was a good fight for them. That was actually a really good fight for them. Shaman, Puck, and Wisp the only ones to go down. But it's the fact they forced the buyback. Or didn't even force the buyback. They got a buyback out of XTT. That means this Yule Scepter is probably going to be its only major item for the next 10 minutes. No Dice of Ice, no Shiva's Guards, nothing like this coming the way of a puck. Well, on the other hand, you get a Blink Dagger now over on Yao. And still a 9 second BKB. Silas got his, uh, his Begolin, you're up and running, 1.1k gold. So everything's right there, and the BKB for in July looks like it's also... Uh, it's not done yet. Needs a little bit more time to farm up as this Centaur. But for now, LGD, I'm wondering if this just turns into a waiting game. And if, uh, if Light Gaming should even be waiting. 
Like, they have all their ultimates off cooldown in 20, 21 seconds. At the same time, so will LGD. Well, they have both Mass Slap and Wards and Moonline Shadow back off cooldown. But they can't just wait for the next Roshan. Next Roshan's in one minute, and LGD will jump in there and take it very, very quickly. There are other options, they try and take another fight up against the lineup without the Mass Slap and Wards, because that was a real... Uh, it was a corker of a position for LGD. They managed to get Ice Shards across here, which restricted the pathing to these two very, very narrow points. And only made narrow because, like, only made available because of the ice shards. And then the mass up wards were in this exact box. This they basically choke point out like gaming. So they couldn't fight as five. Dyer's this is the problem though, of like, someone said like, the, the tier two town in the middle lane is inconsequential. They managed to keep it up. Because Tiny just walks in, hits it a couple of times, backs up, and you have to use your fortification. So I get to blind arrow up onto the hill. It's the only way they're going to get that. The TA trap reveals the fact they're up there. In July, Pitts technically could blink himself in. He's also the man that began the opening by doing this. All stop the time, they want him dead, but XDT, great dream call. He didn't get, however, get the perfect silence off, which means the Brewmaster split will still happen. Puck on the sideline, MMY giving the protection required, while Sila leaves himself away on 200 life points. But Tani's still looking for someone to kill, but he just can't find it because he's losing his teammates. And now a great ice shot. The reload can't save the whiz from that, but it will not save the Sky Wrath Mage. He wasn't tethered at the time, so didn't drag him out with him. Three euros lost for a tier two tower. And I called the timing for it. It was one minute away. The question mark from LGD, can you please put a trap in there, uh, Yal? The answer is gonna be yes. And they're gonna see Roshan in a grand total of 10 seconds. So LGD take a brilliant fight. And again, they managed to separate Lai Gaming. This Tuscar zone out, the Centaur initiation, that was the funnier thing. Because you had your tower here, the Centaur jumped out and got and got the Tiny in this box here. And then the Puck thought it was a great idea to jump out here, but the Snowball, he grabbed him up, spat him back out again, and the Brewmaster split went. And by that point, you realized you'd lost the fight. The Tiny couldn't get close. In fact, the Tiny spent half of his time looping himself around that direction before he came into the fight, just walking with the Wisp while the rest of his teammates were dying. So LGD really got a huge advantage. You can see a drastic change in the Golden Experience graph. And now you'll watch Roshan die to LGD, and that graph will go up even higher. Aegis and Cheese. The extra insurance coming into Yao and Sila. Sila to take that Cheese. He's also got a Mithril Hammer so far, after already picking up his uh, Maelstrom. I'm interested to see if he wants to go Desolator. It's actually not really a bad thing to do. Yeah, but you already have a Deso, so maybe it's not as great. It probably should just be a BKB uh, for Sila. That'll be the wiser choice for him. But if it's going to be a Desolator, like, you're really racking up a lot of DPS coming off from him. And you'll get to a point where he'll two-shot down Wisps. Or well, potentially even the Sky Wrath Mage, he's only got an Arcane Orb as well as Null Talisman. It's the only set items which he can't consume. I'm interested to watch Silas, Silas uh, reaction. Shadows, take us. If I was a betting man, I would say it would be 90% 90, 90 going the way of the BKB. Only a 10% deso chance. Because it's just really uncommon. And most players don't like to stack up your, your orbs. So you got both Mjolnir as well as um, as well as Desolator, but Mjolnir's only gonna proc every now and then while Deso's all the time. Whoop, Faith, Hex, oh this could be big. This could be really, really big, and you know how big it is. He committed his mass server wars to it, but the relocate! It pulled XDD out. Now do they try and help him here? The mass serpent wards, where is it? They gotta find the relocate spot. Super comes back, and there it is. They didn't know where it was because they had no vision, but they will definitely kill off the wisp. But he needed to sacrifice himself then. If the Tiny died just then, that would have been a tier 2 tower and probably a tier 3 tower. It wouldn't have been the game. What it would have been is LGD cracking open a small portion of Light Gaming's base. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Tyler's coming down to defend that tier 2 tower. He's going to need help. He can't defend against that Tiny alone. Intelize already on his way. And that Tiny, well, Sila, too close, man. They'll trigger the cheese already for the Mystic Flare. They get through it all. Now, in July, he's got a question mark. He's going to go for it. He goes on the Sky Wrath Mage. The Brewmaster is also here, considering the split. Now he's going to make his jump. 
And well, how is this going to work? The Brewmaster, well, he'll get his Primal split off. He's pretty damn low for this one, but now MMY will make his way in. Polar punching up the Earth Ruling, keeping him out of the fight. The TA will come back to life again with the help of that Aegis the Immortal. Puck phase shifting out the attack from Yao and Super now going to relocate into his next CG. Just swinging. Bada bada bada. I thought you liked to jump. Three heroes down for LGD. MMY coming back in just because he wants to be dead. And in July. On the run out, the Templar Assassin will buy back, and he knows he has to because XTD will go high ground now. With no initiation available, no controlling heroes up. The Centaur is the only one. He's back at base healing at the moment. And XTD's okay with this. The Whisper's still having to walk all the way up to the bottom lane, but... He'll come up with Illusion Root. They, they, can, they can finish... Ah, the buyback came out from Tuscar. No, the, the one of the controllers did arrive. So I can understand them backing up now. But LGD, they walked into it. And defending a tier two tower on very, very low life points when your team is nowhere near position for it, all Injilai could do, and Injilai made the right choice. Uh, he sat there and watched his teammate die. Because that was all that was going to happen in that scenario. But once he saw the Misty Flare was popped, he thought, maybe, maybe I can jump. We can get a pick off here, and then we'll just find one person out of position. But the fact that Wisp ended up coming back into the fight too gave them such power that they just kept fighting. And Matani stood, sealed, and delivered it. And now he's up to 4.8k gold. Is this Crystalis? It's, uh, it's a heart he's buying. A full heart he'll purchase now. This is going to make the tiny near on kill. Uh, no, yeah, near on killable. The Templar Assassin just doesn't have the DPS output. This is also a point right now where Syla... Leap away. They're relocating up. Your Moonlight Shadow, they need some detection. The Sentry Ball's in the high ground. But the Gem of Brewmaster's too far away. A wasted relocate. <laughs> is that ping coming up from Syla saying, be careful? They're coming back up. Radiant Looks like, uh, in fact, like gave him the tiny attack. behind. Oh, Mass Serpent wants to go to go to ham on the uh, tier 2 tower down here. And it won't take long to bring it down. However, Tiny, want to get rid of these Mass Serpent mods. It's fighting up against Radiant that as well as the tower. Hexed up, the shack is going to be available for Faith, and no one's here to save him. This is no Wisp Relocate coming in to help protect him, but then again, he does not need it. This guy's got a bloody heart! The Brewmaster's killed and runner in the meantime. Glory. Now XDD turns and the Wisp is now alive. Everybody get the hell out of Dodge. Hey, he's swinging to try and cleat into him. I think this is over. I really think this is over. No Rex is gone, but again, you're down three heroes. And I don't see a way you can hold it. If Injulai jumps in for initiation and Templar Assassin's right behind him, even then you can't kill the Tiny at this stage of the game. Nor with the items he's got. So all Lai Gaming have to do is group up as five and move down mid. If there's any buybacks left, they're going to force them, but they're not. In fact, if, they were, if they're keeping track of the counters, they'll know Templar Assassin as well as Tuscar cannot buy back. The only person who can buy back on the dying side lineup is currently alive, and that's in July. And XTD just walks up. Now, hoof stomp. Mana style, dodging it. Uh, that's just brutal. Yao's losing his refraction charges already. The fortification will be used, and just by doing that, it allows them to beat at the bottom towers. And you'll see just how quickly this range rice goes down, and the power of the tiny whisk combo comes to full fruition. He got a lot of space in that middle lane to farm up. He's going to cop a five-second arrow. But the Brewmaster's still here with Clamp and Split. And there's also a lot of support. So there's your Clamp, there's your Split. And Faith is gone very quickly, with the Puck also coming in. And Tiny will stand his ground. Super, he's in a little bit of trouble. Trapped in between the Ice Shards as well as the Tower. The Ghost had protected for a little bit, but it's long enough. He's a tenant to XTD to make sure he had enough power to stand there up against the two cores of LGD. Well, the puck is just evading and jumping back. The ice shards will come again, but XTD just wants kills wherever he can find them. Avalanche toss is coming off cooldown. Avalanche, in fact, gonna waft off to the side. And the TA trap is slowing him down, but another clamp coming in from the from the brewmaster. Just trying to slow him up the snowball. He got that swing in though. He got that big swing in. XTD <laughs> just standing his ground. Just run away. Tap out mercy, please. There's blood. More of your brothers must not die. 
They don't have to die. GG. 30 to 24. LGDCN will be eliminated from the Cena Cup. Their brother team will be able to advance themselves through and play. This is not this is not the game that LGD hoped they would get. The LGD fanboys will be hoping LGD C deck versus LGD CN, but now Lie Gaming. They come through on the back of a very big 12-1-8 tiny. 704 gold per minute, 688 experience per minute.